The United States is trying its best to surround China and get as many allies on board as it possibly can. And why is that? Watch and see. Yes, sir. I'm not freaking blind, guys. It's Squalo style. I think it's Thursday. You could die? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Jeez, you know. Oh, yeah, because it goes on and on and on. For all you haters, there's something to chew on for the next couple of Welcome back to the Guilao 60 channel. Today is the day that you all start to understand how desperate the United States is becoming on the world stage. They had a, a, a meeting between Japan, South Korea, and the United States at Camp David. Camp David is usually used for sort of a, like a retreat, a place to talk peace, not war. But those days are over. Don't even think about it anymore, especially when Biden's in, because uh, he, uh, he, he seems to like war. I think all of the Americans like war, but uh, I digress. The idea that uh, South Korea would befriend Japan. Didn't Japan occupy South Korea between 1910 and 1945? Used them for slave labor, their, their women for uh, comfort women and, uh, you know, kill uh, pillage, plunder, all of that stuff. And then Japan, well, having the Americans as friends, well, they, they, they have no choice. You think about it, each of these guys, because Japan got bombed <laughs> at the end of the Second World War. It was their fault. They, they started it. They, they went to Pearl Harbor. And, and uh, so once the, the Americans got the atomic bomb, they just, uh, they just bombed their, their Japanese asses. And, and that's the way it goes. But Japan has no choice because they lost the war. And then you look at South Korea. Well, they have no choice because if they don't have the Americans behind them while stopping North Korea, well, we saw what happened in the 50s when the North Koreans come over that, that, uh, that border and just started decimating the, the, the South Koreans. That would probably happen again. So they have to do what the American masters tell them to do. Oh, yeah. So it's not enough to surround China with over 300 military bases, American military bases, but they have to have all of these other countries on board. Uh, South Korea, Japan, the Philippines, uh, Australia, every, you know, all of these, these, these sort of follower countries that uh, are scared to buck the system because the Americans are stronger than they are. Okay, but uh, this, this Camp David meeting between Japan and South Korea, it all started out because the North Koreans sent a couple missiles out into the Sea of Japan and uh, that freaked them out. So they called a meeting and they're going to they're gonna have a, a, a group come by a moment and all come together. Uh, but at this Camp David meeting, nothing was signed and uh, they all go away saying, oh yeah, it was a great meeting, but, but what? What it comes down to is the, the United States has spent billions and billions and billions of dollars on, on all of these bases around the world. 300 and some of them are surrounding China. They got over 750 of them around the world. They're, it's draining the American coffers. As they pay so much for their military, they can't build roads, they can't educate their population. Well, you see what happened in Hawaii. Well, you know, I think 12 million bucks went into Hawaii as a as billion dollars goes over to the Ukraine. They're not really worried about their own people. And you can see it over and over again. They're trying to sort of back off, I think, from that a little bit, just for the fact that they want these other countries that are on the sort of border of China and North Korea and Russia to uh, and Iran to for the, for that fact, they they want them to sort of pick up the slack because they haven't been doing much in the in the policing the world scene. So the, the United States needs help doing it now, where before they were stronger than everybody and they didn't need any help, and they just sort of bullied their way around the world. Those days are done, guys. You watch what's going on in the world right now. Uh, proxy war between the Ukraine and, uh, and Russia. Oh, for sure. They're probably uh, proxy warring 
the, the Japanese and the South Koreans against North Korea. And uh, the, the idea that it's sort of on the, we're going to keep an eye on China too. You know, while we're there, we might as well keep an eye on China. You see what happened in Niger? Uh, the Americans, well, you see, the Americans obviously blew up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline from Russia into Germany. And uh, they, they had this plan that they're running this from, they're running a, a natural gas line from Nigeria in, in Africa through Niger into Europe. Oh, but now that uh, uh, Niger is, is, is under different rule that's not friendly to the United States, they said, no, you can't go through our, so six or 13 billion uh, dollar pipeline, poof, gone. I would imagine that they'll have some coup or military action in that area coming up fairly soon to get this all rolling again. But uh, she's going to be a cold winter for the European Union. And uh, yes, it's all the Americans' fault. You see, all of these little things that they do around the world are, are there to sort of screw with every, everybody else's livelihood, country, uh, freedom, uh, safety, uh, you know, their, their economy. It's, 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 the, it's the way it is. Now, now, boys and girls, uh, Nicaragua has made a deal with Russia that they can have military bases in Nicaragua. So it's not just the United States and their allies surrounding countries like China and Russia. Now, it's Russia's turn, it's China's turn to sort of switch it over. I would imagine Russia will probably, if they do it in Nicaragua, they'll probably put a put something up in, in Cuba. And uh, China will look and say, oh, yeah, okay, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe we should start doing that. You look at the naval uh, uh, exercises that Russia and China did off the coast of Alaska, which is off the coast of Russia, but the, the Americans say off the coast of Alaska. Well, they had never done that before, where the Americans always run the Strait of Taiwan, the South China Sea, you know, sort of bullying and pushing people around. Well, it, it, it just goes to show what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And now, uh, well, let's listen. Let's listen to a presidential candidate and what she has to say about this. She's running for the, the, the president of the United States on the Democratic side. And uh, off to you. Do you know how many military bases we have surrounding China? 313. Americans need to wake up. It is a different world. We have about 750 military installations in 80 countries. The fact that other countries are saying, you're going to do that to us, we're going to start doing it to you. Uh, that's the world that we live in now. I think she might have the right idea just for the fact that uh, you look and see what's happening and what the, the Americans have done in the past and now it's coming back to bite them in the ass because if the United States can do it, and their allies can do it. Well, then China, Russia, North Korea, anybody out there, any country in the world can do exactly the same thing. And uh, so they're getting a taste of their own medicine now. And, and I think that's a good thing. So the idea that there's a summit between Japan, South Korea, and the United States at Camp David to uh, strengthen their security ties in that area, I think that's sort of a, a knee-jerk reaction to what's going on in the world. They're trying to strengthen their allies at this time because they see things falling apart. They can't hold it together by themselves anymore. Uh, if their allies turn their back on the United States and leave them sitting out there all by themselves, uh, they're screwed. Basically, they, uh, the, there's massive de-dollarization. There's, uh, there's a lot of countries around the world, especially in Latin America, that are turning their backs on the United States because of the, the mistreatment that they've given them in the past. So when you, when you see all of this stuff going on, especially the military stuff, especially the, the Russians in Nicaragua, uh, you know, thinking about putting something in Cuba, Oh yeah, uh, the military exercises that uh, the, makes the American Navy scramble to, uh, to, to keep an eye on them. Yeah, what are they going to do? You're in international waters. But you, you can see that it's, 
the tides are turning really, really quickly now, where we never thought we'd see this at this time, uh, this day and age. Uh, but it, it's happening. It's happening, the de-dollarization. It's happening with uh, the military uh, um, ties between uh, Russia and, and China, which is, which is amazing just for the fact that Russia has these hypersonic missiles. China does too, but not the not not as advanced as Russia. Uh, China has manufacturing. Uh, the China has the biggest navy in the world. Uh, Russia has battle experience. It's it's just it's it's just a, a match made in heaven, and it scares the shit out of the the Americans. And uh, it's going to be sort of fun to see where this all goes. And uh, I'd like to I'd like to see if the shit hit the fan, which side of the fence India would be on. Because if you got China, India, and Russia, well, you know, that's three of the bricks right there. And uh, it's all about dollars in, in, uh, in the Indian uh, frame of mind type thing. So if you got them together, you'd have half the world's population in three countries and... Uh, that's strength in numbers, guys. Anyway, watch watch this unfold and see what you see 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 what happens. It's going to be interesting, and that's another video from Guilao Sixty. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button. Don't forget to resubscribe, hit the bell, all of those things that you're supposed to do. And uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace out. Bye now.